Hey guys, Aubrey Morel here with Morel Designs, and I wanted to show you how I make my own 3D printed custom stamps. This is the one that I'll be showing you how to make, and hopefully you can follow along. It's a lot of steps, but I think once you get started, you'll get it figured out. Um, these are just a few of the different examples of what I thought I would make. Um, I did actually make that first one. I did not make this one, but I made this third one. Um, and this third one is what I'll be showing you now. So the first program that you're going to need, and all of these programs are free, um, you're going to need Inkscape. Um, and this is one that you will use to turn your image into a bitmap, or you will trace bitmap. I don't really know the terminology. <laughs> so I'm just opening the file here. Um, and these are images that I just found on Google search. So easy. Um, so you'll select the image and then you'll, I think if you go to path on the top tab, I think I'll show you that in a second, go to path and trace bitmap. And then you just kind of have to toggle between the different options and figure out which one works best for that logo. It just depends on how thin the letters are or what it is that you're looking for. So um, if you do the edge detection, it's, it's going to put a line at every single edge. Um, and then those will be the raised portions. So you kind of have to think in 3D when you're doing this and figure out which one you want. Um, I went with auto, I tried auto trace, but if you look at the font, it kind of ate away at some of the fonts. So then I reversed that. And then I think I selected the, uh, brightness cutoff and it kept everything looking crisp. So I went with that version instead. Once you have the version that you like, you're going to pull the tracing to the side and delete the, the original that is below it and then pull the tracing back to center. Um, and then you should be good to save it as an SVG. Just pick whichever folder you're going to remember that it's in and save it. You'll give it a unique name and I ended up putting SVG at the end just because you're going to be saving so many different versions of this that I'll know which one is which. The next program that you are going to open is called Blender. Again, this is a free program. And uh, every time I open this, it has three little things <laughs> on the build plate or whatever you want to call it. Um, so I just go in and I delete those three things. And then I will click File. And you will import, not open, but import that SVG file. So you'll select SVG. And then you'll find the file that you just saved. And usually it's really tiny, so you have to scroll in. You can just use the scroll on your mouse. Um, you will select it. And the way that I learned to do this, and it may be unnecessary, but you need to rotate it on its axis. So um, you'll select it, select R, X, and type 90 on the keypad, and that will flip it up like that, and then hit enter. Next, we're gonna hit number three on the keypad, and that changes the view. Um, you will select the image and turn it into a mesh. So for me, I have to right click on that image, click convert to, and then mesh. And then after that, you will change it from object view to edit mode, just like I did up there. And then you will hit A on the keypad and then E on the keypad and then pull your mouse to the right and that is going to extrude it. So A is for all to select all, E is for extrude, and then you'll pull it to the right to give it some depth and then you'll switch it back to object mode and then you're going to hit RX negative 90 to put it flat back flat on the surface. I then selected the moving button on the left side there highlighted blue 
and then you'll just drag this above the green plane, which I believe is the Y axis. I am not sure. It's the green one. Um, you'll pull it above that, and then you'll go to the bottom left blue cube over there to add a cube. Um, you'll click, drag over, drag down, and it will make a cube, but it's usually not the right size. So here I switched back to view seven, which is above. Um, and now I'm scaling that cube to fit my design. So you'll hit S to scale. And then if you want to scale it on the X axis, you'll click S, S X, and then you'll move your mouse left and right. And same for the Y axis. I'm going to put all of these instructions in the description, but this is just so you can see how quick it can be done. Um, once you've gotten your cube to the right size, you're going to switch back to view number three. You'll select the uh, stamp portion, the extruded portion, which is the black, and then you're going to go to the right over there in the little wrench. You'll click that, um, and then you're going to click add modifier, generate, boolean, select union, click uh, the cube drop down that creates a union between the stamped extruded part and the cube. So it joins those two pieces together. I know that's a lot hanging here. <laughs> so technically we're done. So we just need to save this. We're going to save as a blend blender file and then um, we will export it after that as an STL, and that STL file is what we need for the next program. Okay, once you've got that saved, you'll just, I just minimize this window, um, and then we're going to open our third program, which is Ultimaker Cura, also a free program. Um, so then <clears throat> once Cura opens, takes a minute, you will open the file that you just created and it should be right there on top. And it is. So you'll just double click that <clears throat> and it will add it to your build plate. Um, and it usually has a weird scaling, so you're going to have to figure out what size you want it. Um, I believe <clears throat> that it's in millimeters, so you just need to measure how big you want it and then convert that to millimeters. Um, usually 75 to 85 millimeters is a good size for a logo. Um, I think I ended up going with 75 there, and that did end up working well. So uh, when you're printing a stamp, it needs to be a reverse image. So I just flipped it over, which is the easiest way to do that. Um, flipped it so that it would be, when you stamp it, it reads left to right. Um, if you'll, you may have to pause this to look at all the settings there that I have for my um, 3D printer, but if you don't have the same 3D printer, you're going to have different settings, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Um, then you can slice it and preview it to make sure that everything is going to come out and print clearly. Sometimes if a font is too small or too thin, it has trouble reading all of the lines. So you'll have to kind of go back with the program and play with things. But this one worked out fine. So here I am. I am taking that file and turning on my Ender 3 Pro. Uh, plugging in the little uh, SIM card that came with it and um, I make sure to clean the build plate before every use. Um, I found this Ready 3D stuff and it just makes sure that the printer or the print adheres to the build plate because I had so much trouble with it in the beginning that it would pop up on the edges and not print correctly and then the whole thing is messed up. So you clean it and then use that build plate adhesive and I have not had any trouble since I got that stuff. So I'll put a link to that in the description. It's from Amazon. Um, so then I will go locate my file and hit print.
just a little snippet of it building the base for the stamp. And I think this was about 90% complete. It was on the final steps there. And you can tell that adhesive works really well because I could not get it off the plate. <laughs> And here we go. I'm going to use it. That's just some cornstarch. Um, for this, the design was pretty intricate, so I didn't want to use plastic. Um, so you can cover your clay with plastic and stamp through the plastic, and it'll create like a beveled edge on everything. But there were too many letters, and I wanted it to be really crisp. So I used cornstarch and then stamped it. And it looks great. And here it is on one of the five sample mugs. I know that this is way too much information to try to follow. I went through it pretty quickly. Um, so I will put the steps in the video description. Um, feel free to ask questions. I cannot guarantee that I will get to all of your questions because I've had a lot of comments lately, but happy to help when I can. I hope this is helpful to you guys and hopefully you're able to use this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.